Hello. This program I'm going to be talking about an article I read in the newspaper yesterday about a young man called Tom who broke his relationship with his mother six years ago. Uh, apparently he hasn't seen her or had any connection with her in that time. Um, first I'm going to have a little bit of a, a criticism though of, of the article. Uh, it basically it accuses uh, Stefan Molyneux, uh, the host of Freedom Main Radio, of, of running a cult that uh, attracts children out of their relationships with their parents. It's called uh, defooing. Um, and this, I mean, this is quite a, a tired and, and rerun uh, story, um, and quite a bit of a hack job, I think. Uh, I, I don't uh, take it very seriously. The the nature of the article, um, and this is why uh, I, I think Stefan Molyneux uh, really rustles the jimmies, as they say, um, because he uses reason and evidence, and, and sociopaths hate this kind of uh, uh, logical consistency um, because it exposes them. Uh, and what concerns me, though, or annoys me, perhaps, is that the newspapers um, could be talking about some other cults that I think are just a, a little bit more significant. For example, the cult of government. Uh, governments have, have caused um, deaths of, of uh, 100 to maybe 200 million people just in the 20th century alone, you know, uh, military. Um, the Glorious Wars, uh, and uh, the state, of course, is 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 built on extortion through st taxation, and that's that extortion is enforced through an oppressive uh, police force, and uh, ultimately, if the police is resisted, then of course you have the army that would be be used to to uh, make sure that the government kept running. So I think that's a, a little bit more of a serious cult, and it's really an evil cult as well because uh, what all the things that the state depends on, like extortion, oppression, and and uh, war, um, it forbids to uh, ordinary uh, people, to to its so-called citizens. They're they're forbidden from using all these techniques. Um, so you know the the state has claimed that. Uh, the people in government are allowed to, to do all these things. It's even their duty. It's even a social necessity. It's a, a necessary evil uh, to to run our society for all these bad things to be done. Um, and yet, you know, if if ordinary people do these kinds of things, then then they're in trouble. You know, it's bad. It's evil. Um, and this this complete perversion of of reason. And, and morality is, is I think, uh, probably the most significant cult that uh, one ought to be talking about. And then, of course, is the, the cult of, of the head of state, um, which, of course, in the UK is uh, the Queen. And I, you know, I have nothing personal uh, personally against uh, the Queen or the royalty or anyone else with sort of, of, of wealth and... and um, Privileged background, I'm fine with that. Um, I just think the the, the the sycophants and the the veneration and, and uh, praise that's heaped upon this establishment and, and upon this personhood is is well, it's just strange, isn't it? I mean, she's she's the sort of uh, she's an accident of history, you know, just because she was. Related to a long line of, of uh, inbreed uh, warmongers, um, she's you know, this famous person and you know, wears nice dresses and it gets people excited. I mean, that's kind of weird. That's that's spooky. It's just it's just crazy stuff. And then of course there's all the, the popular religions. I mean, we we hear about weird religious cults, but I mean they're all weird. I mean, take. Um, uh, the most popular, uh, the the the, uh, the the god of the Jews, the, uh, the this invisible, omnipresent um, uh, scourge, um, creating uh, um, 
famine inducing uh, locust plague sending uh, uh, evil spirit basically that's um, that that demands uh, or prefers uh, little boys to have their uh, soft bits cut off uh, soon after they're born I mean, that that's kind of a cult that uh, might be worth um, calling into question and challenging and you know not much different the Christianity with the the 2000 year old uh, uh, Jewish zombie I mean that you know I mean that's just uh, that's just crazy stuff too and look at all the damage these um, these cults are, have caused historically and and all the uh, bad things that are going on still because of these these cults, and and yet you know, mass media doesn't really doesn't really use the cult word to describe them. And you know, shock horror. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Stefan Molyneux. He he's he's created this cult, and it's based on on reason. Oh, how awful, you know. So let's just try and get things into perspective. Uh, so, um, Aristotle um, spoke about uh, treating things uh, proportionally. He said uh, like cases should be treated similarly. And uh, this is really important. I mean, this this is really at the heart of, of philosophy, and really it's it's just at the heart of of sanity, of, of not being uh, crazy. Um, so I'd like to talk about another cult uh, and. I don't know, maybe it's more or less damaging than the ones I've just mentioned, but I think it's an intimate part of it. I think it, it's it's a big part of the story, and that's that's the cult of the mother. Um, or perhaps I should say in this this day and age, the, the cult of the uh, single mother. Um, now, the story I saw in the press is, is about somebody I know, uh, Tom, um, and from what I know of him, I, you know, I've only only met him a few times. He's kind, he's intelligent, he's sensitive, and he's considerate. And I don't know, he's a bit he's a bit like me, or like how I'd like to think of myself. Uh, maybe a bit quiet. Um, I think Tom's probably a bit quiet, and maybe I'm a bit noisier. I don't know. I like I do like to talk about my stuff, um, but you know, I, I can be a bit of a uh, of an introvert. Um, and when I read this um, little bit about his story in, in the newspaper, this inflammatory um, outpouring from his mum of oh the, the cult's taken me away, uh, taken my son away. Um, my my story kind of resembles this. I saw I saw bits of myself in this uh, drama, and I looked at the picture of uh, his mum, and I, I kind of see my mother there, a um, bit of a projection, I suppose. And yeah, it, it takes me by surprise because it's not it's not a topic I think about much. And there, you know, suddenly there it is in the papers. Oof. Uh, son doesn't doesn't have relationship with mum. Um, the article really doesn't explain it, or it doesn't it doesn't uh, go and get Tom's um, story, which is is just really bizarre. I mean, it just doesn't work um, to hear one side of the story. And they certainly don't talk to Stefan and, and, and get his view on board, um, you know, having a, a call called him a cult leader, basically. Uh, so there's none of this sort of uh, journalistic balance that um, we're supposed to um, see. Uh, but anyway, back to my story. So, you know, I, I guess um, I'm guessing he he had a similar kind of experience to me, maybe that uh, his mother looked after his basic physical needs, you know fed, given a bed and um, clothed and washed and you know all those kind of things and my mother uh, worked hard at her job as well um, to, to support the family um, she worked hard in the house with the domestic chores and so forth I mean, maybe she even you know, overdid the work thing and, and could have done with relaxing a bit more and, and, and taking it easy but I don't think she could do that um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't possible for her to stop and have her feelings and, and go into that stuff a bit deeper, perhaps. Um, and well, anyway, we're, we're supposed to, to venerate our mothers because of you know all this looking after us that they they do, um, you know, the, the, the cleaning, the cooking, and the 
support, blah, 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 all of that stuff, all of that um, parental stuff. Um, but I, I don't know, there's, there's something inconsistent here. I mean, we, we don't really venerate people who look after their dogs, do do we? We don't buy them, you know, fluffy cards with unicorns on and lots of woo inside. Um, because, of course, you know, if you, if you get a dog, then, well, of course, you're supposed to be responsible for it. You, you, sh you should be taking it for a walk. You should be feeding it. Um, you should be patting it and uh, giving it some affection and, and so on and so forth. I mean, yeah, of course, that's just the, the done thing, the responsible thing and, and the proper thing. And, it, you know, it's, it's great that you've, you've looked after your dog and it's great that parents look after their children. But is it really worthy of praise? Um, and yet, yeah, we have this culture of pedestalling mums and 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 uh, looking, you know, sort of looking aside from from their shortfalls and and the things that they might be getting wrong or, or not doing very well. Those those are just sort of brushed under the carpet, um, just to talk about things that they they should be doing anyway. And yeah, my experience was was was. Um, uh, there's a little bit more to the story. Um, you know, I was physically abused. I was hit hit um, at least two times uh, in very um, unpleasant and emotionally toxic and, and angry way. Um, and, and my emotional needs were not met. Um, so you know, I was emotionally neglected as well. Uh, and physically, I wasn't protected either. I was bullied a great deal at school. Uh, nobody ever bothered to to ask me about that or uh, and nobody turned up to, to look after me and protect me basically from from some quite unpleasant physical ordeals and and some some emotionally traumatizing experience that you know were happening on a, on a regular basis so you know essentially I experienced a uh, uh, fundamental parental failings and you know, I've worked out my adverse childhood experience score and it's definitely four could could be five um, I think it's possibly five uh, which is not a high score um, but but really you know for, for a healthy happy upbringing you, you need to be zero you need to you need to not have experienced any of these adverse uh, experiences and you know there's always a a story to this uh, a background um, my mother was abused by her mother I, I, we used to go around to my grandmother's uh, every week pretty much every Sunday you know venerate the mother venerate the mother uh, but my grandmother was was bitchy and uh, deprecative uh, she was always putting down her husband puts down herself I guess and and um, I, you know no doubt that she was physically violent uh, to my mother um, so they must have had a, like, a really toxic and unpleasant relationship. Um, and, you know, I just, I didn't see any love in their relationship. I didn't see, um, I didn't see the real, the quality stuff that, that makes uh, a parent-child relationship um, what it needs to be. In order to to raise a, a emotionally healthy child, and yeah, my, my mother was. I think it, it, it was like there was this tangible cloud of inauthenticity. It's like she, there wasn't there wasn't really there wasn't really a, a a person present in the moment. There, she was always stuck in this this history, this 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 anger that was you know, ready to erupt at any time. So. Do I think Stefan played a part? Did, did he cultishly uh, destroy this relationship? Um, well, yeah, obviously he's played some kind of role in this. But uh, I'm rather imagining that the, the relationship between Tom and his mum was already, you know, hanging, off, hanging from a thread. And there wasn't much left. Um, that's certainly what my situation was. And, you know, somebody just came along and, and uh, cast a critical light on it and the scissors uh, cut the thread um, and somebody walked free somebody walked into a, a new part of their life um, and I, you know, I won't say that I'm happy for not having a mother relationship I would like to have a supportive and connected and loving 
mother relationship but you know I've accepted that that's not going to happen and not possible um, and you know I've withdrawn uh, from a situation that wasn't supporting me that was 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 undermining me that was holding me back um, and I really don't think that going to the newspapers and and you know uh, playing the, the victim card um, when you've had a big part to play in this situation is is a good idea I don't think it's a good idea that uh, Tom's mum uh, talked about him joining a cult and so on and so forth I think that's inflammatory I think it's flaming I think it's accusatory um, and it's it's really saying to Tom you know <laughs> you stupid son you stupid um, and that's that's just unempathic and and frankly abusive um, just not a clever thing to do at all I, I can't imagine a responsible and, and sensitive parent doing that kind of thing I mean, and even if you did think this was a cult um, I, I just think there's, there's just going to be much better approaches and what it also tells me is that these these questions um, that needed to be asked haven't been asked uh, you know son why why are you leaving what you know what's gone wrong um, why don't you want to be in this relationship to me what are you, what are your feelings about this there's, there's, there hasn't been the there hasn't been the the connection and the curiosity about the child's relationship um, with with the parent there hasn't been that, that feedback of the feelings between each other um, that, that holds a relationship and you know that was certainly my experience and I'm just guessing that's what Tom's is as well um, so yeah consequences um, let's let's give people the consequences of the nature of the relationships they have with us whether it's in our dealings with with uh, government people you know or um, religious people or whatever um, if, if they're negligent if they're abusive if they're violent uh, then no I, I, let's not be friends let's not encourage any kind of uh, faux relationship with them let's let you know let's have a boundary and say no no um, I'm, I'm not going to be there for you and and you know not be apologetic about it either um, and you know, the strange thing is some people really just don't get this they don't they don't understand why somebody who feels abused or neglected in a relationship would would just say well look goodbye uh, I don't I don't want any more of it um, and that that points to something very I think fundamentally different about some people um, I know it's you know, probably cliched but you know, it, it's pretty obvious I think that uh, the mothers like this are narcissistic they're, they're solely focused on, on their own experiences and their children really are, are just silhouettes in their life um, they're okay they, they do they do all the things that parents every parent should reasonably do um, but they, they just can't do the really important stuff the stuff that um, the stuff that makes life really beautiful and which is so essential for children um, and, and here we are and yeah it's, it's very sad um, yeah it's, it's an empty it's an empty seat at, at, at the table at dinner it's not having that that deep connection with the mother in, in the way that um, would be would be very beautiful and, and very nourishing uh, to any to any child in that or their age. So I'd be interested in, in hearing your feedback on these topics. Um, <laughs> just the I mean the whole thing of, of you know a cult of reason. I mean it's it's just ridiculous. Come on, come on. So yeah, do give your feedback below and share your experiences if you care to. I'd like to hear from you. And you know, if you if you want to tell me what you think about Tom's story or, or my story, um, I'd be interested to hear that. I'll, I'll put a link to the article uh, so you can read it and, and uh, give feedback. So thanks for now, and bye.